What is up you guys? It is Dre with Underground Hip Hop Blog and today we are back at the legendary Catch One for the even more legendary Sky Zoo. Other performers include Skanks the Rat Martyr, Eva Rhymes, Jay Sands, Pause One, and so many more. We are super excited to be here so let's go talk to the fans and see what they're most excited about today. Okay, what is up you guys? This is the most energetic group here. I wanted to talk to you guys for a second and see how you are feeling. Who are you most excited to see today? All of the artists. All of the artists. Everybody. Everybody. So what made you come out today? Out of all the days of the week, why are you here today? Honestly, to show support. No other reason no other reason other than that. Okay, what about y'all? Uh, to turn up. <laughs> to turn up? What about you? Pretty much the same thing. Same thing. Okay. Show love. Show love. Here, come here, come here, come here. All right, who are you most excited to see? Oh, everybody, everybody. 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 I can't, I can't single no one out like that. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is a legendary venue. I don't know if you guys know, but this place hosts a lot of hip hop events. So I want to see each and every single one of you at these events. Tune into undergroundhiphopblog.com. Country Boys in Cali, bro, what made you come out tonight? Well, I'm a huge Sky Zoo fan. I've been a Sky Zoo fan since the days of him on 106 and Park Battle and Gin. So I've been like going back as rocking Sky Zoo since forever. I mean, that's like 15 years from now. Um, back when he was running with Jamla, Ninth Wonder. Um, I have uh, everything, pretty much every album on vinyl. So I'm a real, real. Yeah, show us, show us what you brought. I just caught the uh, bluest note. And then I also caught uh, Milestone Vinyl. I just caught these, add them to the collection. The newest album that we're here for, I'm eventually get that it went out, but it was sold out. So huge Sky Zoo fan, really here to support them. You know what I'm saying? Been there, like you said, been back there. I got every album release on vinyl pretty much that he's put out on. So it's like, you know, huge fan, great music content. There we go. There we go. All right. I know he's a, uh, bro, he's, he's here. I want to know. Why are you such a fan of the underground? Why are you still here? What makes you stay, honestly? Well, I think underground hip hop in general puts this fine aesthetic of reality based rap. And it puts in the things of like the conducive of the working class man, especially the working class black man. Well, Sky Zoo and a lot of MCs and his air, uh, Ram, the Rock Marcy's of the world, the Griseldas, the L's Eyes. Um, they talk a lot about what it is to kind of go through that everyday struggle of being a working class MC, which Fonte from Little Brother talks about a lot, where it's like you're, you're well known throughout the world, millions know of you, but you're not a platinum selling artist. You got to hit the road, grind 200, 300 days a road. You know what I'm saying? I've done the music and obviously I discussed this on Two Country Boys in Cali, the guys who have to be on the road constantly, sell merch. The merch is very dependent on their financial well-being. And then also constantly put out quality music to service their consumers. I, I'm not even going to say consumers. I'm going to say their... Uh, Listeners? Like no, 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 no. I'm going to be there. It's like their their financial backers. So in music, one thing people don't understand, this is a financial backing. Like Every time a fan purchases your music in any form of creative the space, you are, you know, required to give them quality. And um, Sky Zoo and many of these artists that you guys on your blog talk about give quality artists. So it's like almost being a financial or financial support and back and you're getting the all the quality. Because over the last 10 years, especially with streaming and download, music has been diluted and quality of music has been went down so much where a lot of people- Talk about that, can you talk about that? So, I mean, with the mixtape era, which I am a part of in general, a lot of people have essentially basically like cheapened where it's like they gotta constantly put out albums, albums, mixtapes, tapes, EPs to be able to fund their things. Because you look at what streaming Spotify give or take for every 1,200 to 1,500 depending on the day because there isn't uh, technical statisticals of it. 
that's what an album sell is. So you can have a million streams and you you barely have enough money to cover your rent. You don't have shit. That's why I like the show money and the tour money. And with the pandemic, it's good to be able to support an independent artist like Sky Zoo, who who did who went months without you know having that consistent revenue or touring and merchandise. Um, can I ask you why he's had that success? Why do you think that he, above a lot of other people, has that success? Uh, I think it's penmanship, um, as well as also too the overall well talent. Like he calls himself a writer, like the writing of it. Like when I listen to uh, Sky Zoo, it's listening like lit- listening to literacy on wax. Like his rap, his lyrical wow. vernacular. So if you listen to like how high his vocabulary is and how structured his word is, it would be the same as me reading a book. I really appreciate you coming on here telling us honestly the truth. Honestly, like the God honest truth, what people need to hear. So this is Ashton. Shout out your podcast one more time for the good people at home. It's Two Country Boys in Cali. We everywhere. We're on YouTube, Spotify, um, iTunes podcast. Me and my boy Quentin Hurd. We talk a lot about music, hot topics, everything else. Go check it out. Also, we've had plenty of discussions with uh, hip hop artists, um, as well as also writers, a lot of people in the hip hop community. So if you check it out, you'll kind of get this viewership of it. Thank you and have a good one. So we are here with the legend, guys. You, bro, how did you enjoy tonight? Nah, it was a blast, man. We had a great time, great crowd, you know, touching the walls to the front, you know, the whole thing. And it was great. You know, I'm, I'm glad to be back in L.A. Every time I'm in L.A., it's a hell of a show. And one more, you know. Okay, all the brilliant things. Yeah. What inspired you? Tell me. You know, really, um, just being fed up with the, the changes that are happening in my neighborhood changes that are happening to the culture that you know we've all built and contributed so much to and just really wanting to speak on it and kind of educate people on what's going on and maybe start conversation and dialogue about where we are and and where we can possibly get to. Do you want to elaborate on that a little bit? I mean I know a lot of the people here in LA they're very woke but I want to get into the details like the nitty-gritty. What is some things specifically that you wanted to shed light on? Gentrification 100% you know the changes that are happening what it really means when you move certain people out of certain neighborhoods because you go to their neighborhood because you fall in love with what it is but then you get rid of everything that you fell in love with it's a juxtaposition it's kind of ass backwards right like if you came here for this then why get rid of it when you get there you know so a lot of those things you know it's, it's really about just um gentrification cultural appropriation and how the two go hand in hand and what all that's about and um uh, again, I just wanted to speak on it. I, I just had a lot to say, and I wanted to say it. So you perform some of your songs tonight. I know you have a couple shows coming up. Um, what can we look forward to in the next, like, coming months from you? Just more shows, more videos from the album. You know, the album just came out about a week yes. and a half ago. Yes, I So it's very new. So I think we live in an era where you drop a record, and then the next day the fans are asked, when's the next record coming out? And it's like, wait a minute, the record just came out. You know what I mean? So... You know, this record is going to live for a while, and it's going to be more videos, more shows, more promo for it, and just really getting people educated with the fact that this piece of art is important, and, and we're here to serve it. For sure, man. I really appreciate that. Okay, so we are Underground Hip Hop Blog. Yeah. I want to know, what do you think defines underground different than commercial? Yeah. That's a hard question. You can it take is, a minute. You know what? You know what I think the difference is? I think it's being able to make the music you want to make regardless of what may or may not come with it as far as the material gain the financial the monetary all those things you know it's really just saying i'm putting my integrity and i'm putting what i feel is important first and of course it's a business and we all want to get paid and we all want to call our moms and say hey quit your job you know what i mean like we all want to do that but a lot of times people in the position that i'm in we put the people first it's like we're putting everyone else first, meaning the music we make is benefiting you and serving you and we're giving you food for thought as opposed to let's do this and get this money real quick. There's a way to get the money while still doing that. And I'm a perfect example of that. I've been able to prove that for the past decade. 
do you still, I mean, you have a huge notoriety, you have a huge following. I want to know, what do you consider yourself? Do you consider yourself in that, like, kind of gray space? I mean, you kind of, you have a large following where it wouldn't be considered underground, but at the same time, you're still very true to your roots, so it wouldn't yeah. be super commercial. Right, right. Where, where do you find yourself falling if you had to classify yourself? You know, it's, it's a middle ground. It's a middle it's ground. A you know? Yeah, like you said, you know, because I'm, I'm able to, I'm able to dance in so many worlds, for lack exactly. of a better term. I can be exactly. over here, and I could be over here, but I found a way to make it make sense. You know, it, sometimes people try to go over here and do too much, and go back over here and do too little. I found a way to, to balance it out and, and really be in the middle. So what advice do you have to any like upcoming artists that, you know, they're trying to stay true to themselves, but they still want like the monetary game, but they really, they really want to do it for all their people like you were saying. Yeah. What, what, what advice do you have to like up and coming? Oh man, building a fan base, you know, building uh, equity with people. People know when they come to me, they know what they're getting. And as long as I don't let the people down, I'll always be able to do shows. I'll always be able to sell merch. I'll always be able to get music licensed in movies and games and TV shows. And I'll always be able to provide for my family and, and enjoy what I do for a living. You know, I think if, if you can create art and make money and provide for yourself and your family off of your art and your passion, you're already rich. Because you still enjoy it. At the end of the day, yeah. it's still fucking work. You're doing what you love and you're providing and you don't have any real worries and you're able to do what you love and not have any job or anything like that, you're already rich, you know? You, you made it. Tap in with Sky Zoo. He just released a new album. He did a dope performance tonight. Thank you everyone for coming out tonight. I appreciate you. Peace and love.